Good evening, everybody. Um, what I'm going to speak to you about this evening is how we've dealt with, I suppose, the, the transition from a rural club very shortly, or not so long ago, into a very big club in, in, in Leakslip. Um, what we have seen is exponential increase in growth. Leakslip is about 18 kilometers from Dublin city centre. We have 15 and a half thousand people that live in, in Leakslip and we, um, we have been um, trying to deal with uh, assisting all, all, all those people in, in, in playing our games. Our competing priorities, we have rugby, uh, basketball, soccer, everything that the rest of you would probably encounter in an urban and suburban setting. So we've been trying to see how we're going to be best in class at delivering um, our games to those people. And the first thing we looked at was the commitment that everybody in the club bought into putting all our energies into fostering the growth in our youth. So from our executive committee down, everybody uh, bought into the, the need to look at the grassroots in terms of how we were going to increase our numbers. So when we looked at our numbers um, from five to seven year olds in our academy and our pathway in, in, in 2015, we had 40 participants. So for us, that wasn't good enough in a, in a, in, in a setting in Leaks that put 15 and a half thousand people. So what we've done, and when I say we, um, a number of us, but most particularly Adrian, Flynn and, and I, we set up um, a bespoke academy and we put branding around that. And I'll talk to you and show you a little bit about that in a minute. But what it showed us was when everybody committed that we were able to move from 40 youngsters on a Saturday playing our games up to 190 this year as we finished at, 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 at Christmas time. But one thing we noticed when we were going through our programs on a, on, on a Saturday was that there was as many younger children, siblings, on the sidelines with their parents. And we thought, could we do something there? Could we do something a little bit better? And I reflected on that, and I thought back to my home club in Thomas Davis and Talla, where Stephen Bates was running, something with a few of my own peers and friends with some of the, some of the kids. So we went and had a look at what they were doing, and we thought a little bit further about it, and we then went to the Kildare Sports Partnership, to Sil Merrins, and Sil and his team came out and worked with us and put together a program which we call the Buntis Program, and we're very thankful to them for, for assisting us with that. So not only had we increased from 40 children up to 190, we now have 300 participants on a Saturday in Leakslip. And I'm going to tell you a little bit, some, pull out some of the spokes of the wheel in terms of how we went about that. And a lot of you probably have done this before, so we're not special, we're just doing our own thing, it seems to be working. And what's comforting for me when I look at Peter and the two Kirons b before me, um, a lot of what they're doing um, we're actually doing, and I'm going to come at it from the grass, from maybe literally a grassroots up, and I'd like to pick your brains over the weekend in terms of how we might uh, work with you on a few pilots as well. Most importantly is a pipeline, both in terms of children and the coaches. So what we found, um, and particularly in the gender balance, is that there's a lot of males uh, coaching from five to seven, seven year olds. But this year for the first time, we've had four ladies um, make the transition with their children, in fact, from Buntus. So that's their four-year journey. The most important thing with the Buntus program, and again, we'll share and speak to anyone who wants to talk to us about it, is that the parents participate. So I have my little one, she's three. So at three years of age, she knows she's going to the GAA on Saturday. She, um, we dress them the same. I'll show you now exactly what we do. But from fundamental movement skills from very early and the whole social interaction, and not only for the kids, it's the spin-off for the parents as well. So I'll start talking a little bit about that. One thing Adrian and I weren't expecting people to say to us was we provided a safe haven. So when people come to Leakslip on a Saturday, they see everybody dressed the same. Adrian and I stand out a little bit more. We wear some funkier colors, but people know who the bosses are. People know who the coaches are. So we're very distinguishable at all times. We've also created a welcoming zone. So what does that mean? We've tarred an area. We've blitzed it with signage, we've created a brand, we've brought our coffee shop out and our shop out. So heretofore, when people were dropping kids off and heading up the road elsewhere to get a cup of tea, we've changed that paradigm. They're staying with us now, they're talking to one another. And even for the younger kids, we've put in an area where, which is a soft play, so a spongy ground for the lack of a better word. 
Equipment-wise, when we started with 40, we didn't have much, and Adrian and I approached the executive with our plan, and they thought we were mad when we said we'd reach 100, and I suppose we did as well. I was trying to pull Adrian back to say maybe it would only be 80. But without the support of our executive and the local authority through some community grants and I suppose the people we owe a lot of debt to are the KN group, Connell Murray there, he believed in our plan and he said, look, we're going we're to give this a go. So for us, when people came up and saw a brand that they could associate with, it was a real shot in the arm for us. And that's every quarter we're adding on another blue chip brand. So Intel have looked at what we're doing in the Buntus, and they've helped us now add more equipment to that. Because again, we started with nothing, and we're now at 110. Coaching and games development. Again, it's probably the core of what we're, what we're all here for. For us, we are very thankful to Leinster and to Kildare, to uh, Alan Mulhall and to Noel Mooney there. They're both games and coaching uh, managers. And the time, the support they give us through our GDAs, Paul Divley and John Doran, both Kildare hurlers, and a recent uh, appointee in terms of our GPO, Michael Gillick, we couldn't do what we're doing without them. Because now we're putting in place we would have started delivering foundation courses to people that, who may never have been involved in the GAA. Now they're going through the pathway process. A number of us have done our award level ones, and now we're making it, I won't say, well, I will, a condition precedent that we need to get more level twos this year. So we put huge focus in here, and I'll come back to that in a moment in another slide. The community engagement has been vital for us. It's the community that come to us. It's the community that interact with us, and that's never lost in us. So when we do some fundraising or discos, we give money back to the people that we see are helping the people that bring their children to us. So we, um, we give money to the Leak Slip uh, Tidy Towns. We've given money to Heart Children Ireland. We've given money to Parkinson Ar Ireland as well. So it's not lost in us that we have to give back as well. And we found that very powerful and everyone very, very appreciative of it. Last year, when I sat where you are, we were doing this, and Pat Daly stood here and he said, we need to create massive volunteer armies. And that's probably why I'm asked up here this evening, that we were doing this, and I said to Pat, let us share that story. So what does that mean? It means on a Saturday, on the pitch, boots on the ground, the kids 50-50 between boys and girls. I'd have to say it was probably 100% in terms of the coaching boys versus girls, but we've changed that now this year. Um, but we still have this commitment and buy-in from everyone, from the parents, from the coaches. When we see our numbers dip, we have 30 coaches on a Saturday, so it's no mean feat to try and organize them, delegate what they're doing, registration and things like that. But we've adopted an ambassadorial role with our players. So when they come down, they spot and fix. So we get on with our jobs, and they're floating around. And we're very fortunate that we have the John Dorans, we have the Maria Mulix, the Tommy Mulix, um, Jack Barrett, and other in, in our club. So when they come down, they wear their, their Kildare gear or they bring the Christie Ring Cup with them. And when you see the, the, the kids being able to look, touch, feel these superstars of our games, it's fantastic. And you forget about the, the Pogbas and others of this world then. So it really closes the loop for us that they can see there's a start, there's a middle, and there's an end for them. Um, what's happened is we've outgrown where we are. So it's a, good, it's, a good, uh, it's a good problem to have. So as I speak, I'm hoping that uh, Tony Patterson's are finishing putting bead on our new 3G pitch. We have a 20-acre development that we're just finalizing at the, at the moment. So uh, any day now, we'll be, we'll be, um, we'll be completing that. And I just see Carl O'Brien, uh, who's helping us there as well, both in uh, a GAA capacity and a professional capacity. So thanks, Carl, for all your help. Uh, so that's what our club uh, in academy looks like. But why are we all doing this? For the love of our games, for the GAA. And again, the chap spoke about it earlier. Not only are we looking to help them play to stay, we're preparing them to stay. So we're getting them ready for their go games. So for us, when we started the process, we had one team every year boys and girls that were going to the Kildare North Board, so about 10 children. Now we have four teams registered every year, so we've quadrupled what we're doing. They're playing dual sports, and they're having great fun. So the challenge for us, and again, comforting to hear that others are looking at it, is now we have this army, both on the pitch and off the pitch, 
we will now be focusing on helping them to play to stay. Um, um, again, why are we doing it? It's the legacy, but it comes back to the commitment. Um, when we all sit down with our children in 10, 15 years time, we can tell them we left no stone unturned for you. So that's why forums like this evening are powerful and so take as much out of them as you can. So maybe one little thing, we too have gone exclusive with an apparel provider. And in doing that, it means commonality from socks, shorts, right the way up to what everybody wears. But again, in terms of a pathway, you'll see our Buntus here, our pre-academy. The boys wear green and green and blue. The girls wear pink or green and blue. The girls wear pink and blue. And we have our Have a Ball logo. So they have a sense of identity. They know where they are. And the boys were wondering why, the, why it's green and not blue, but we were too close to the dubs, so we had to change the green for that one. But as you move on then towards your goal games, your cub changes a little bit. You're now in the academy. There's a variant on the boys, and we're getting closer to our own leaks of GAA colors. Likewise with the girls, there's a subtle change. So you're working along and losing the cub. And as you go up then, 13 and beyond, again, it's the same look and feel. So everyone's in it together. The kids subliminally know that they're part of something. So that's worked very well for us. And, um, so who's our audience? How are we doing all this? We have four primary schools in, in Leakstep. We've over 1,345 children. We share facilities with them. Um, we've been trying to make the schools a home away from home. And how do we do that? We're building and retaining trust. We're working in the schoolyard with parents to try and see why is somebody not playing with us, come up and give it a go, trying to ease them into it. We share equipment, and we've done something that worked out very well, and we stole it from Kilmacud. Uh, one of our colleagues, Paul Horan, saw it there. Is we invited all the teachers, the caretakers, up to have a meal with us at the end of the year to thank them for all the work that they're doing with us. And that was really, really, really good. They were so thankful of that, and it's something that had never happened, happened with them. So in delivering it, again, we hadn't compared notes genuinely. It's the five-star center. So we have our have a ball in, in our academy. We use fun and run, and again, thanks to Orla Rec for developing that program in Kilmacud and all the others that you'd be familiar with. So that's how we have been able to increase our numbers. We're sticking to the pathways. We're sticking to the programs. Pat and his team, they have to be commended for that. And that's what it looks like, the product of our success. We have over 40 girls playing, playing camogie and football, similar numbers with the boys. This year, for the first time, we've had to go with two cool camps. We never thought we'd go there. There was, there was no hurls or helmets in North Kildare at all. Paul Divley burnt a load of diesel trying to keep everybody tooled up. Um, and then powerful, the youngest kids chatting to Barry Moore in there, some of them listening, others not, but it's, it's really good. Again, uh, the apparel, everyone dressed the same, and you'll see David there wearing his Kildare gear. We're huge on imagery, so you'll see that's everywhere. We blitz, blitz it with it. Um, and kids having fun, wearing their gear, and then the link into the, into the, into the future. We're working um, with the future leaders now this year, and we bring some of our youth teams down here, some of the girls, so they're watching what we're doing. They're helping as well in spotting and fixing. So that's a little bit about what we're doing. There's more bits to it. It's a time thing this evening. Um, but please say hello to any of us. There's five or six of us here, and we'll help you um, um, discuss what we're doing. And if there's anything you can help us with, that would be great too. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.